So you're thinking about getting a new dog, a new puppy, but you're not quite sure what breed to get, or maybe you think you know what breed to get? Well, on today's episode, I am going to be talking about how to make sure that the breed you are getting is the breed that fits you the best. So let's go ahead and dive into that next. Welcome to episode three of our podcast. Uh, Just like the last podcast, I want to start by just telling everybody I am Jake. I am the host of this podcast, and I am one of two, my wife would be the other one, owners of OnDogTrainingAcademy.com. This is an online dog training resource where we will have courses and everything for people who just don't have time to train their dogs on a schedule or if they cannot commit to going to a class every week, or if their dog is just not able to be in a class. Our courses are designed for all of you, so please check us out at ondogtrainingacademy.com for more information. So, with that being said, let's talk about today's discussion, and that is going to be picking out or selecting your next dog slash puppy. That would be uh, deciding what breed is going to be best for you. Because let's face it, dogs are not all created equally. Every dog is a little bit different. And I mean, that can be said even interbreed. Like not every Basset Hound is the same type of Basset Hound. Not every lab. God, there are so many different types of labs. But with that being said, making sure you are selecting the right breed for you is a incredibly important decision and a really good start when it comes to beginning your puppy search. So let's go ahead and jump into that. First thing I want to talk about is the ideas you have rolling around in your head right now. So I get a lot of people who, and I was one of these as well, who have a breed they either grew up with or love or they think they look pretty. And they're like, that's my next dog. That's what I want to get. And it's okay if it fits you and your lifestyle. And if you checked out our last episode about all the red flags, watch that. If you haven't, listen to that and then listen to this one because it all just kind of bleeds into its, into each other. But making sure you're going to get the dog that is best for you. Um, you know, I grew up with Basset Hounds. So naturally when I moved out, I decided I want to get a Basset Hound. But... I realized over time, and I loved the dog. Don't get me wrong. He lived to be 12. He was awesome. Awesome dog. But he started to not really be the breed that was right for me. Um, Would I ever own another Basset Hound? No. No, I would not. Um, They just don't fit my lifestyle now. Uh, I have Belgian Malinois and, or a Belgian Malinois, and they fit more of my lifestyle and they're kind of my jam right now. So that would be more of my breed of choice for now. But things change. And with that being said, don't be stuck on a breed that you grew up with. Don't be stuck on a breed that that you really like the look of and all these different things. Or your friend has one and it's super sweet. Look at what this dog is about. Okay, if you live in a a tiny little apartment and you're looking for a dog, don't look for a giant. Don't look for a high strong dog. You need a more mellow dog that can handle living in an apartment or a small area and not have crazy, crazy, crazy energy uh, energy release rules and stuff that have to be done. You know, take a peek at that. Like, figure that out. You know, don't don't go, well, you know, I, I live on a farm, so I need to have a farm dog. Well, that's not necessarily the case. You know, you can get whatever breed you want as long as I think if it fits within what you need it to be. Uh, if you're looking for just a companion dog, make sure that when you're when you're researching these breeds, you're getting a dog who actually wants to be with you. Because believe it or not, there are certain breeds that are designed and bred to be more independent, to be more isolated, and they're not really family dogs. Now, maybe you're looking for a dog that's more independent, isolated, and doesn't need you that much. Maybe if you're looking for a dog to guard your flock or do something like that or, or you know, whatever, cool. But figure out what your lifestyle is. Figure out, you know, the majority of what you do 
and then try to find a breed that's going to fit within that. You know, if you take a, if you're like, well, I'll just get a dog of whatever breed I want and I'll just train it to be the dog I want. Well, it doesn't always work. Square peg, round hole, right? It's not going to always work. So I'd rather say, here's my life. Here's my situation. Here are the breeds that fit within it. And this takes time. This takes research. Now, some of you might be going, well, I'm not going to get from a breeder. I want to adopt. Cool. Awesome. Support adopting. Support buying from good breeders. Support all of it. I support just being a good dog owner and not being a crappy one. So whatever. Get your dog from wherever. That doesn't mean you can't look at what the breeds are. Okay, when you're looking at dogs, don't go, well, you know, it's a rescue or it's a, it's whatever, so breed doesn't matter. Breed 100% still matters. You know, it, it's all there. And I don't care if it's a mix and people say, well, mixes are better. Maybe they are. I don't know. But definitely look at what is it mixed with. Is it got herding dog in it? Does it have terrier in it? Is it a hound? All of these different breeds, all of these different categories of dogs have specific behavior tendencies or, or things about them. So really do your research when you're selecting a breed out. You know, make sure it's the right size. Make sure it's the right temperament. Make sure it's everything that's going to help set you and your dog up for success because that's the biggest thing, right? Like if I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick a dog out just because it looks cool, but does, but completely doesn't fit what I want in my dog, you know, and even me, I do sport work with my dog. You know, my, my Malinois, I do sport work with him and we're busy, but in the end, I need a dog that 95% of its life is going to be a home dog and he's going to be hanging out with me. He's going to be my companion and my buddy. And so when I was looking for breeds, I needed to make sure that I could get both of what I wanted, right? So I got, I got my sporty dog, but I also got a sweet dog. Now that was not just going into a breed and saying, okay, I want this breed of dog. It was going, okay. I've isolated it down into a breed I want, which at that point was Malinois. Now I'm like, okay, I'm now going to reach out and <clears throat> see what uh, what the breeders have. See what their temperament and their lines are. See what their dogs are like. Because that's a big thing too. You know, take probably one of the most, if not the most popular breed of dog right now in the country and maybe in the world. Don't know. Doesn't matter. The Labrador Retriever, Right. There's so many different types of labs. You've got your colors, then you have your types. So you've got, and I'm going to say the three, because I know you can breed off different ones. I've got my own opinion on that. doesn't matter. I think there's three breeds of, of, of labs. You've got your chocolate, your black, and your yellow. And on top of that, then, you have your show style, and then you have more of your field style labs, and they come completely different, right? Your show style labs, and this isn't for all of them, but your show style labs tend to maybe be a little bit more mellow and I don't want to call them dumb because I don't think they're dumb. They just are a little more mellow and a little more slower moving and stuff. When you get your field labs that are strictly bred for hunting, you have a lot more energy. You have a lot more energy requirements. There's just a lot that goes into it. Now, I favor more of the field style because I like that energy because I think that energy, if corralled and molded correctly turns into awesome obedience not saying you can't do it with the with the show labs they're awesome too we've got clients that have show labs and they're like the sweetest coolest dogs and some of my favorite clients this is just my preference but you you, you have to break it down and again if you're looking to adopt that's cool but still pay attention to what you're getting into you know look at the dog you can look at a dog and you can kind of see things it's mixed with you can, you can look at all these different things and decide, well, okay, this looks like it has Border Collie in it. Well, Border Collie, they're known to be herders. Obviously, they're herders. And they've got a lot of energy. Maybe they can be twitchy, whatever. And <clears throat> is that right for you? Well, I've got a bunch of kids running around. And so maybe a herding dog isn't great right now in the situation where I've got a bunch of kids running around crazy. This is coming from somebody who lived as a child with a border collie and did get nipped in the back of the legs a couple times when you're wrestling with your dad and the dog decides, mm, I need to control this situation. So this is personal experience from my part. And I, you know, it's, it's, 
you just want to try and match what you can, figure out what you can, but don't be so stuck on a breed that you ignore its characteristics, you ignore its traits, you ignore everything just because it's the breed you want. Because that will probably, possibly, I don't want to guarantee, lead in heartbreak of some kind, whether it's behavior issues or you're just not gelling with the dog. You have to be able to gel with your dog. You know, and if you have a if you're a laid back, calm person and you get a breed that's incredibly hyper and crazy, where's that where's that common ground gonna come? You know? Your dog's only gonna be cool with playing fetch. Well, some dogs will play fetch till they die, but you know, there's only so much you can do with that. You you need to get a dog that's going to gel with you and don't expect your dog to learn how to gel with you. You should gel with your dog. If that makes sense. It might not. Either way. So just kind of figure this out. Like, like look into what you're getting. You know, if you're like, hey, I want I want a dog that's going to be awesome in an apartment. I want a dog that's a little more calm and sweet. You know, your Cavaliers, things like that are just awesome little dogs. Um, I'm, I love, like I said before, I love my Malinois. Uh, but at the same time, I do love a Black Lab. I feel like they, you know, this is just me being biased and honest. The Black Labs, I think, are, are like my favorite, aside from Malinois. Um, they are my favorite breed. And I'd, I'd like more of a field style, a little more energy, a little more drive. But that what I want will not fit everybody. You know, I want hyper, I want high energy, so I can mold into certain things. A lot of people don't need that, and that shouldn't happen. So, take your time. Just like I said in the last episode, pause for a second. Don't go buy a dog just because it's cheap. Don't be like, I got a good deal on this dog. Genetics play a lot of part in this temperament plays a lot of part into this i feel like i'm gonna pop out an episode here soon maybe next that's gonna be talking about what we do when we're looking at selecting a puppy or getting a new dog whether it's a rescue or a puppy and just kind of talking about the processes that we would go through in evaluating and making sure this is going to be the dog we need or want um but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother long drawn out episode which will be coming very soon i imagine so just take your time, make a list of dogs that are going to fit you, and then start breaking it down into, okay, here's six breeds that, uh, that fit temperament-wise and fit my lifestyle. Okay, which ones do I want? And then you can start going into like, well, this one's prettier, this one doesn't shed, this one doesn't do whatever, you know, and it's just what, what needs to happen, you know. I, I feel like it's, it's an important step that is always neglected. To some degree, you know, people look first about looks, then they go into, well, it doesn't shed. And, and this isn't an insult on like doodles and stuff. I think there's some awesome doodles out there, but doodles are, there's a lot of energy, your labradoodles, your golden doodles and stuff. They have a lot of energy. And so it's really important to make sure you're ready for that energy. You're ready for that work that it's going to take. And, and that's it. That's it. That's all I got for you guys. So just take your time, figure out what breed you want. Make sure it's the right size, temperament, everything that's going to fit your lifestyle, not your friends, not what somebody suggested, or not because somebody has a free puppy and they just want to give it to you. A free puppy is never free. You know, a free puppy could cost you so much in training or vet bills or whatever could pop up down the road. So don't jump into this super fast. I know it's hard when puppies give you the baby look, the puppy eyes. Don't fall for their tricks because that is what it is, tricks. All right, guys. Well, like I said before, if you're interested in more training, more stuff, you can definitely check out our uh, ondogtrainingacademy.com where you'll find courses for training, online courses for training. And yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So thank you, guys. We will see you down in probably a week for the next episode. See you then.